All right, Mary Linda, my first sure. question to you is what is the thing that made you say art is for me? Well, I've always been passionate about art. And for me, it's about expression. It's about art gives us an opportunity to, to, to speak about our experiences, about the world, to share opinions that we have, to share beauty. It's really about expression. And that's for me in the art world in general. And then in terms of being an art consultant, it's really helping others find out who they are as collectors. What is it that speaks to them? What is it that moves them? And so it's really the same thing. It's about how, you know, how does someone express themselves as a collector, but also what moves them, you know, from other artists, that kind of thing. So it's a perfect segue. Tell me about the source art approach to curating for individual collectors. How do you select works? How do you create a cohesive narrative? How do you find what resonates with clients? A very good question. You know, when we start, we start with a visit where we really kind of try to figure out who these people are. The, we, we often start with a designer's vision. So we are already kind of in the world, we have a sense of what they've been drawn to in terms of creating a space for themselves. And then we meet with them and we meet with them and share with them collections of work that we think might fit within that world that might be sparked off by somebody, you know, who, who, who has chosen to, to be in that space. And, but we do a wide range so that what we do then is share those collections and kind of get, get a refined sense, you know, oh, they really like a heavily textual or they're really to art that has a story behind it, or they love figurative work, but really not photorealism, you know, so all of this happens. They like really edgy contemporary work, or they absolutely only want things with gold frames, you know, like they really like the traditional, you know, and so, so share collections and we call them and, and then we go through our process, but that's how we, that's how we start often working with the designer in the process, but sometimes the designer will just pass us along and we take the process from there. So tell me a little bit about how you work with design professionals. What factors do you consider when you're picking art that's tailored to a specific environment? That's a great question. You know, artists that we work with and galleries that we work with um, never have a concern about us matching the sofa, which is like, you know, uh, 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 a terrible thing in the art world. Oh my God, they're picking design choices just based on, you know, so that does it look good with the sofa? And the reason is, well, the reason why designers don't mind bringing an art to their projects is because they know I will match the sofa. So but none of it looks like that. So the idea is that you are being inspired by the design, by the art realm that the clients are drawn to. And that's whether it's commercial or residential, private clients. Because in residence, we're look, I mean, in the commercial world, we're looking at the brand at, you know, the space just as well as we are with residential and their personal tastes. So what we're looking for is something that looks like the room was built around the art, and yet that also at the same time elevates the design. Everything plays beautifully together. And, you know, the thing is, is there's, you don't have to choose one or the other. So you can have art that completely is in alignment with a designer's vision that also is completely beautifully suited for the client and may not be the Kind of a thing that the designer would think of, but, and like I said, we often are working with the designers, so they get to kind of guide things, give their own input, whether they're in the meetings or not, we into the process. And so it really is a very symbiotic relationship. We have private clients where we don't have a designer. I always love having a designer on board because we're not designers. I am not a designer. I have been in that realm for 30 years. But I love it when somebody else does what they do best, and then I do what I do best. And, and that's actually one of the things is a lot of times when designers learn about what we do, they're like, oh, well, I do a lot of my own artwork. I don't know whether we would really need you. I mean, some of them say, oh, my God, we've been looking for someone like you. We have all these projects where we're not able to get them completed, and then we can't photograph them or, you know, that that it ends up being finished less than, you know, would be desired. But the ones who say, well, I, I kind of have a sense of art and I, they, they, they see, they may have galleries that they go to, they may have showrooms that they regularly work with, but it's the amount of time and the expertise and the resources that we have 
that we're able to put to the project. So we're able to find work for the difficult areas. We're able to source from all over the world. We have hundreds of galleries that we work with and thousands of artists and everything from emerging through blue chip. And so we are able to bring to the table a range of works that most designers don't have you know, their, their hands on. And we also are able to spend the time to really figure out what speaks to the client. So it's not just a pretty painting on the wall. It's this piece that really means something to them and works beautifully within the room. Sure. But most designers wouldn't try and do the draperies themselves. I mean, art is very much in alignment with what they're drawing on, but just in terms of access to, you know, to, to a network that we have. What are some of the challenges or conflicts that arise during the creation process? I would say the first one that comes to my mind is a difference in opinion between the partners who are living in the space or who are using the space. Again, whether it's commercial or residential, residential tends to be a little bit more. So one will very different tastes than the other. And so, you know, we just kind of acknowledge that and, and see sometimes there will be a place where both can live, you know, oh, we both love this. Or sometimes it's a trade-off. It's like, I don't hate this, you love it. And then this one over here, I love and you don't hate. Or, I mean, the best is, oh, I like it and you love it, you know, but would say that's that's one of the the big challenges sometimes it's I, mean, I don't see this as a challenge i see the just bringing them along helping you know because a lot of times clients that we have i mean we do have clients who are big collectors and it's really thrilling to expand their collection in accordance with what is going on with the you know with with the project that we're brought you know, where, where we're brought into the project. But it's also a lot of times they have no idea who they are as collectors. And so I would say the challenge, but one that I, you know, really love working within the realm of is where is, is helping them figure out who they are as collectors. Because what you find when you start kind of digging in and showing different things is that everybody really knows what they're drawn to. There's one, a lot of times they're insecure about their opinions because they're, they don't have education and the context. So that's what we provide. We can say, oh, you like this type of work. Here's, you know, a, a, a range of works in that realm. Or if they're bringing something in themselves, I might say, that's beautiful. We'll definitely bring that in. Or I'll say, I don't know that that's going to last. So there are sometimes pieces that are in the moment, you know, something that's very exciting at the time. And sometimes those are pieces that will be forever in their collection. But there are other times where maybe the, the basis of it is thin and I'll say, well, you know what? I know that you love this, but here, take a look at this, like a little bit more of maybe a sophisticated version of it. Or here's someone who's working with more complexity. So there's a lot of artwork out there that is really hard to understand, right? When like, you, yes, yo, go ahead. When you start from square one and you don't know who you are as a collector, what do you do? Where do you start? So first thing would be to get an art consultant or you, it, it's about kind of you know, educating yourself, availing yourself of what's out there. So going to art fairs is a fantastic way. Art fairs can be very overwhelming. So we tend to help people walk through the art fairs in a way that gives them context. A lot of times we do events that people understand the art of collecting art. And, and so for instance, for Miami, Basel, we do events where we share with them in general the art of collecting, but also start sharing what is going to be in the show this year. I found myself as as I went through fairs over the years, I was I, I would get glazed over pretty soon. And I found that I was that wasn't happening to me anymore. And I realized it was because I have context for what I'm seeing. So all of this imagery without context just starts becoming a blur. So I always when people go to art fairs, take breaks. And then also take time to not just look at, but when something catches your eye, stop, talk to the gallerist, get read up on what it is. So you start getting, and, and don't expect yourself to get through the whole thing or take it all in. That's the same thing with seeing gallery shows. Like if you're going to go um, to galleries in your area, you know, um, just know that it takes time. And that's the thing that we are able to provide is we are able to, come into a project, like say it's a, a new, newly built house, newly designed house. And there are many areas that they're looking for art for. So let's maybe say they've upgraded and there's not many pieces that are going to continue on. And this happens a lot for us. And it may take us 
six months, a year, sometimes two years to build a collection. Want it to look like you just went out shopping and you stuck things up on the wall. So we're bringing in a variety of mediums and styles and places in the world they're coming from and, and that they have some personal connection to it. And so, but so you can do that over time, but it does take a while. But if you're wanting to kind of speed that process up, you know, that's one of the things that we're able to do. And then obviously in a commercial setting, when they're doing the same thing, they're doing a whole makeover, we're, we're wanting, we're coming into like, what does it want to say? What do they want to say in the lobby? What is it, you know, what is it, how do people, they want to feel in the offices, in a hotel, what, you know, what in the restaurant, what are they looking for? Like, what is the feeling? What is the vibe? And so that's the questions that I would have our clients be asking themselves, you know, and whether they're working with us, somebody's working with us or just finding art for themselves. Those, those are, you know, some of the questions. Tell me a little bit about how you source new artists and how you develop your relationships with artists. Oh, that's a great question. So we are forever going to art fairs around the world to artist studio visits, galleries locally around the world. And Instagram actually is a great way for a, a newer way that we're finding emerging artists. We find somebody whose work we're drawn to, we reach out to them, and often we'll do a studio visit, just get a better sense of who they are as an artist and how we might work with them. We find out you know, how are we going to navigate that relationship? Sometimes we have artists that we work with individually in certain realms that they also have galleries in other places. So yeah. Cool. Now I know you're, you're curating for individuals. It's very personal, but the industry is not immune to trends. So can you speak to any greater trends in the art world, whether that's as far as how the business is run or aesthetically? I think that, you know, people working in between the worlds has been very welcomed in the last several years. So many people who are making those bridges, like we are as an art consultant. It's always been about relationships, but I think the flexibility of those relationships has definitely evolved over the last several years, particularly because of the pandemic. But even before then, I think it's just been heightened by the pandemic. The people, so a gallerist job is to bring an artist's work to the world, to have artworks that would really speak to their clients. And so their interest is to bring that artwork out, that artist work out in whatever way they can. They do art fairs, they put on shows, they will bring art to, you know, develop relationships with the artists and museums. And so all of that is, I think, a really good example of what they're trying to do is have people know about this artist's work. And so that's obviously what the artist wants. And so on the other side, there's all these people who are wanting like the best artwork. And so however you can make that connection where you're bridging those worlds is great. And so one of the things that we do is we have always worked with interior designers and clients, but we've brought our process that I was you know talking about briefly before together online as a way of sharing collections and the whole process with our clients through that process. But also it is a platform that allows us to share the work. And the way we work with clients is we are bringing in, we are registering, logging artworks, not only for people who are working with us individually, not only people who are listing their works publicly on our site, but also galleries whom we work with who might never have their works be public on our site, but they're available so that anybody who it, who we're putting collections together for have access to the entire world of art. So it could be blue chip work, it could be emerging artists, somebody they've never known. It might be a gallery in Hong Kong. It might be, you know, a Peruvian gallery. So with the website, we are able to create collections for a designer to create a project, for them to then share those collections with their clients. It can be branded with their information so that what they're sending to their clients is beautiful and applicable. They're able to track where the artwork is going the you know, in, in the project. So maybe I back up for a minute. In our process, what we do is, like I said, we have that initial visit. 
and kind of get a sense of who they are as collectors. And then our next step is to take photographs and measurements for all of the art areas. And so when we then come back to our office, we then put it in uh, into our pro into a project. So we have listed on that for that art area, for that potential art area, the size of the wall, what design references might be at play, what types of artwork we might be looking at. And then we start doing these collections. As we refine the collections, those then are reflected in our art plan documentation, which is all on the website. So all of that is accessible for the designer and the source art team. The clients then get to see the collections. They get to see output of what artworks are being considered for what area. So let's say in the entry, we're looking at three different options and you know, they might be different price points. They're from different artists. They have a different feel. We do renderings of these artworks. So they get a sense of how they feel in the space. And then in the art plan documentation, they could see, oh, this one is $60,000 and this one's $30,000. And I kind of like this one just as much. And that gives us money to go down to this part of the project. And so all of that information is then available for the client. So this is how we walk through the, through the projects with our clients. And it is also all on integral to our website platform. Very cool. The vision that I've had from the very beginning was being a bridge between the design and the fine art worlds. And so that is, and so we've been developing our process with our clients, but all along the way, we've been developing this process that is now on our online platform. I know you're also an artist. So I'm curious on a personal level, which aspect of this process lights you up the most? Are you interested in the individual piece or the piece in the room or the collection altogether? That's an interesting question. I think it's exploring the artwork. I love that. So I, I mean, I, I feel so lucky that every day I get to spend my day looking at artwork and considering artwork, going to art fairs, going to gallery, working with my team to help find the most beautiful, exceptional artworks for each project. But it's also, I love helping people become collectors. So as an artist myself, it was about self-expression. So it was about connecting with people and helping them go on a journey somehow using my own experience as a way to transport them somewhere. And so, you know, I'm a sculptor and installation artist with performative aspects. I was an actor before I went to art school, but I feel like I'm working like an installation artist. So to come to the second, you know, you're, you said, or in the space, it is about how do the pieces speak with one another? How do they play with everything in the space? How are they going to impact the, the, the people living in that home, like if you place it here, that means every time they walk, you know, into their bedroom, they're seeing this piece that, you know, relates somehow. So it's, it's really all of it. That's very cool. Okay. So we were talking when we met before, we were talking about showrooms. The fact that that is, you know, another way of interfacing with the design community. And so we also do help showrooms with finding artwork we're working with two currently we've worked with another one previously where again working with their brand but helping them find really exciting pieces because really one of my main goals is to to again make that connection having artists work i mean artists are out there making incredible work, pouring their heart in and soul into their work. And often they're not that good at getting the work out there. So the job that, that I see with anybody that we're working with and also with galleries is to find a way to get that access to people. So it's just, it's another one of those realms like the art fairs and art shows and our website. It's just another way for people to access the work. That's great. I love what you're doing. I think it's really cool. And I'm excited to point people in your direction. Oh, well, thank you. It's, it's always great to talk to you. Uh, always a pleasure. Have a fabulous rest of your day. Oh, thank you. You too, Courtney. Bye.